Hello again, my name is Amber. I hope you enjoyed your day today and welcome to my seasonal vanity tour. If you are new to my channel, new to my videos, welcome. I like to use my seasonal vanity tours as opportunities to show you glimpses of my collection, but in a very um, small, meaningful way because I personally, when I started watching YouTube years ago, I would get so overwhelmed watching all the tutorial videos and makeup collection videos and and just you know sometimes you just look at your makeup and you're like what should i do to put these things together what are the combos that work best and so you know when i wanted to start doing the seasonal vanity tours i thought that would be a you know bonus way to show you not only what i'm panning but different combinations that i use that i love that i wear on an everyday basis so if you want to shake up your routine you want to be inspired to pull some products out that you haven't touched in a while or you want to figure out things that you might want to project pan and, and use and enjoy this is another resource for you and then you can see what i'm doing what other people are doing it's fabulous so um, as we get into the seasonal vanity tour this is pretty much what i'm rotating as far as my summer makeup everything revolves around my pan that palette challenge i'm currently panning the Lorac pro palette Again, if you are new to my videos, you're new to Project Panning, go on and check out the panning community via Pan That Palette, via Project Pan. Um, you can look up Project Pan community in your search bar. There are many, 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 many people um, panning palettes out of their collection here on YouTube, whether it's the Lorac Pro, maybe they're panning the Urban Decay Naked palette or other favorite palettes in their collection tons and tons of ideas are available for you to try out different eyeshadow combinations lip combos cheek combos you name it so let's start having some fun shake up our makeup routines and get into this seasonal vanity tour all right here we go with the top of my vanity as we you know kind of get into it i do have a vanity in my bathroom this is where i you know, basically sit, have my me time, do my makeup every morning, and this is the setup of things that I have um, been rotating, actually. Um, I've just recently decluttered and reorganized a lot of my um, larger backup stash makeup collection that I actually store out in my bedroom, and so I went through, kind of get started with this lip organizer here. I actually pulled this out of my um, big makeup storage, and I'm you know went through and pulled out all my high-end lipsticks because i really would like to use those and enjoy them after you know majorly decluttering some old lipsticks that i needed to really let go of so to kind of give you an idea of what's in here i've got these three rouge infusion lip stains i've got like a magenta shade a pink shade and a coral shade i've got my bite beauty pencils like this one is in glossé aubergine pomegranate uh, quince, or if you're, you know, in Texas and use a Spanish pronunciation, we'd say quince, and then rhubarb. I have been really loving this as I pan my Lorac Pro. It's a great, like, neutral, everyday lip, kind of 90s vibe to it, but love this. And then um, I pulled out four of my Kat Von D lip samples, um, and then I've got a couple of Maybelline Color Vivids. I've got a couple of Urban Decay lipsticks. Um, back here, my husband just picked this up for me in Prague. It is a Czech brand called Douglas. Love, love, love this particular uh, formula of lipstick. I will have a review on that um, haul and kind of swatches and things coming soon. And then I've got um, one of the Clinique um, ColourPop lipsticks. This is in Fab Pop. It's perfect for a smoky eye. Um, especially using the color Slate from your Lorac Pro if you're um, itching for some new ideas. I also have the Lipstick Queen Frog Prince uh, lipstick that recently came out. It is a no joke green lipstick, but when you put it on your lips, it is the most beautiful pink shade. I love it. It's in my college colors. I could not pass this up because it is so fun and festive. And then um, I pulled out this old, oldie but goody lip gloss from my collection. This is the Revlon Super Lustrous Gloss in the shade Lilac Pastel. I really, <clears throat> excuse me, I really like to wear this with very neutral shades. And I've also been kind of dabbling with trying it on top of the MAC matte lipstick in the shade Stone just to kind of see 
change up the color a little bit. And then over here, I've got um, Bear Pop, and then I've got a couple of MAC lipsticks. In these, I've got MAC Russian Red, um, Nouvel Vogue, Damn Glamorous, um, Cream Cup, I'm trying to think what this one is, No Faux Pas, Stone, um, Whirl, and then just kind of like a smattering. Here's my Bite Beauty lipstick I got when I earned VIB Rouge several months ago. This is an Urban Decay sample in the shade F-Bomb. Then over here, this is a Rimmel lipstick. I absolutely love this. This is in shade 06. It's like a beautiful, uh, bright, punchy, corally color for the summer. I really enjoy wearing this right now. And then um, I did receive a um, Maybelline MAC lipstick in the shade, what is this, Vibrant Violet for my birthday along with an Urban Decay blush. So I wanted to go on and put this in and rotate it. And then I've got two samples of the Too Faced Melted Lipsticks. One of them is in Melted Fuchsia. This darker one is in Melted Berry. I really have been enjoying these. And then as far as lip liners, I really don't have a ton of high end that I'm rotating, but the one I've particularly gravitated toward is my Makeup Forever Clear Lip Liner because literally it works with everything. And I especially love to pair it when I decide to wear these Too Faced Melted Lipsticks because otherwise, these can be a hot mess all over the place on your lips. So what I do is I go on and line my lips with this clear lip liner. I take one drop of the Too Faced Melted Lipstick, put it in the center of my lips, spread it out. I have no transferring problems whatsoever and they do stay comfortable to wear. So that is pretty much it for kind of my lip repertoire right now of what I'm rotating. Then over here, this little dish I picked up at Target. They do have these on display on end caps currently. They've got them in a variety of colors. I wanted something flat that I could use to dry my uh, Real Techniques and my Beauty Blender sponges after I clean them so they're not just sitting on a counter every day. And also too, when this starts getting a little bit, you know, kind of weird from, you know, makeup, like when I apply it, you get makeup in the bottom, you just pop it in the dishwasher, good to go. And then, I did have a larger mirror before, but I decided to go on and downsize to this smaller one because I was having a lot of annoyances having to move my mirror all the time to film get ready with me's and things. So I actually found this mirror at TJ Maxx. It was about $10. I really, really enjoy this. And then I don't have to worry about moving my entire setup every time I film. So really I can just push it up over here since I wear my glasses and then I set up my tripod right back here and it's no muss, no fuss, easy peasy. So love, love that. And then as far as setting spray, I actually found this under my bathroom cabinet so I wanted to just enjoy this, move it out of my collection. This is the Mario Badescu Rose Water Facial Toning Spray. I like to spray my face with this after I wash it and then I shake it up, lightly spray it before I apply my makeup and then shake it and lightly spray after I'm done with my makeup. I really have enjoyed this product. You can find this at Ulta and earn towards your Platinum Rewards points. And it smells like roses, which, you know, I can be kind of hit and miss with, but this is very lovely. And then as far as palettes, um, I went on and I found this um, letter organizer at Hobby Lobby a few months ago. It works really, really well to organize my daily palettes. And I think it looks pretty up here on the counter. So um, I basically pulled out a few palettes like this year. I am panning my Lorac Pro for my Pan That Palette Challenge. I would like to finish this before December of this year. And so to keep myself from being bored or getting frustrated, I went on and I pulled out other shades from my collection so that I don't feel like I'm just stuck with this palette. So in addition to that, I pulled out kind of a Lorac theme this year. I wanted to pull out the Lorac Pro 2. P.S. and by the way, if you want a really pretty combination, the shade Cool Gray looks beautiful in your crease with Pewter from the Pro Palette, just saying. And then um, the other one I wanted to pull out, obviously, you know, along with the Lorac theme is I really wanted to pull out my Mega Pro. If you have the Mega Pro and you're painting your Lorac Pro Palette, bring this out when you run out of the shades Cream white espresso and you can even start doubling some of the um, warmer brown shades in for taupe when you run out of those in your uh, pro palette just kind of keep the theme going and, and keep enjoying the makeup from your collection so and then 
I do have two other palettes. This first one is an Inglot palette my husband made for me while he was in Europe. Um, so I will have a haul video complete with swatches with these Inglot shadows and numbers. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of playing around with them because I have not had this for very long, but the shades are beautiful. They are crazy pigmented, and like I said, there will be a separate video if you would like to see color names, swatches, and, and, and all that good stuff. So wanted to keep that out there, so I start using it. And then um, I've pulled shades from random palettes just to kind of put in here and use. Let me kind of do a quick run through on what's in here. Um, this palette in particular, I wanted these shades to, to go with the um, shades in the Lorac Pro. So you know, out of what you see in here, I pulled out NARS blush in Exhibit A. It's a really beautiful blush for summertime. I wanted something really intense to go with shades like Garnet, Gold, Light Bronze, um, and even like uh, Sable um, and Espresso. I also pulled out the NARS of blush in Deep Throat for something a little bit lighter. I've got a sample here, a deluxe sample size of NARS Orgasm. I figured, you know, that's a one-stop shop you don't have to think about your blush and then as far as some singles up here i pulled out my urban decay single in free love i love to run this in my crease to warm up looks um, when i wear peachy corally shades on my cheeks you can also use this shade to double for nars orgasm it makes a beautiful blush and finish on your skin and then also I've got this Urban Decay single in the shade Mildew. I really like to pop this on my lower lash line when I wear shades like light bronze and gold in particular. This will be a shade that can carry you. As I was saying, this is going to be a beautiful shade to carry you through into the fall. And then I've got a couple of shades here that I pulled out from between the Urban Decay Book of Shadows 3, Book of Shadows 4. Um, I believe this one came out of the Book of Shadows 4. It's kind of a taupey. Um, creamy color. I thought this would be great as a transition shade or a lid shade. Um, I've also got this teal color that came out of the Book of Shadows 3, I believe, and this one is either Last Call or Bordello from Book of Shadows 3. I don't remember, but this shade in particular, if you have that palette, looks amazing with light bronze and with gold from your Lorac Pro. It kind of mimics a NARS duo. Um, and then I've got a couple of Too Faced shades. I wanted to pull out this one from the Too Faced Matte Eyes palette to use as a transition shade when I want a little bit cooler toned of a look. I also pulled out this cream um, matte shade from Too Faced. I don't remember which palette this came out of, but I love to wear matte highlights on my eyes and on my face. So I figured that would be a great way to move another shadow out of my collection. Then I've got the two like greenish gold and the bronze shades from the Too Faced Romantic Eyes palette. I wanted to move those out um, because I've pretty much, I've made a big hole in the Too Faced Romantic Eyes palette. So I figured why not pan it kind of along with Lorac Pro. Like I finished the lilac shade, so I pulled out the very same lilac um, shade and cut the cake from the Too Faced Bonbons palette. This is the matte purple from the Romantic Eyes palette the matte pink, and then I used up the shimmery kind of white creamish shade in there. And um, I can't remember if this was the matte shade from the Too Faced Romantic Eyes or if this is from another Too Faced palette, but thought I would use these. And then I pulled out a couple of shades from the Urban Decay 15th Anniversary. Um, this beautiful peachy pink, not well, peach shade called Flow. Um, I wanna say this is Midnight 15 and then the deep end because I thought those would be really pretty paired in with the Little Rock Pro. And these are two matte shades. This one is Chinchilla from the Too Faced Matte Eyes palette and I believe this is from the Too Faced Matte Eyes palette as well. I love wearing this shade with Slate from Little Rock Pro. I pop this into my crease, it's absolutely beautiful. So, oh and before we move on to inside the drawer, I wanted to share this with you. I also use bar soap to clean off any of my Beauty Blender or my Real Technique sponges because using bar soap tends to work a whole lot better at getting the staining out of your um, 
sponges. So um, I picked up this soap dish in the bath section at Target and you can use any bar soap you want. I happen to go on the recommendation of a sweet subscriber of mine who loves Dr. Bronner's soap. So I thought I would try this out. This is in the peppermint scent, I believe. It smells like peppermint and like eucalyptus. Really, really pretty, but it does not matter what type of bar soap you use. So you could use whatever's in your, you know, shower or tub. If you have extra bars of Dove lying around, like if you're if you're couponing, um, or you could use antibacterial bar soaps. But I've noticed overall these work much, much better than liquid soap. You can cut off a chunk so that way you're not using the entire bar at one time. And let me just say it's way cheaper than buying the Beauty Blender cleansing bar. Just saying. So wanted to share that tip with you. You can save a ton of money and get out every last bit of makeup from your sponges and do it for a fraction of the price. So had to share that. All right, now we're gonna get into pulling out the drawer. And this is gonna look different from the last time I did a seasonal vanity tour because I have reorganized to make things even way more functional for me and to also give me a lot more variety so that I continue to cycle through my makeup. So starting off over here, well, before, if you have not seen my previous seasonal vanity tours, I got these plastic drawers inserts from Target. This one is a three pan that I you know, have used to store lip products. I've used it to store eye products. Currently it's for my face routine since I'm trying to downsize my foundations. And then this is one large tray that has one, two, three, four, five, six individual containers in it. And then I found these little bins at the, I want to say the dollar section at Target. They came in a pack of two and I just use that for extra eyeliners and mascaras and things in my drawer so that I continue to rotate them. So Starting over here on the left, I have my brush roll I bought from an awesome Etsy store called A Soft Black Star. I will link her below because this brush roll is fantastic. She well made them, they hold up well. I have owned this for years and I throw it into the washing machine and the dryer every time I deep clean my brushes so that I start off fresh all the way around. I personally would rather use a brush roll at my house because I have small dogs or pardon me, I have large dogs and small children, so I don't like a lot of brushes and things that can accumulate bacteria out on my vanity with all the extra dog hair and kids' hands and things like that. So I really like a brush roll that I can pop in my washer and dryer and then keep in the drawer to keep it, you know, a little bit more clean and sanitary as I use my makeup. And then, um, in this front section, I've reorganized this to rotate the foundations I'm currently working with. Right here, I have the um, CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous Foundation in the shade Creamy Natural. My husband picked up this Inglot foundation for me in the shade um, LC100. It's a little bit too dark for me, so I've been mixing it in with these two foundations. I did want to try the new Maybelline Better Skin Foundation not really a fan of how this wears throughout the day but i thought i would give it a try i do like the way it applies initially it's just it's not quite holding up to my standards even with primers so moving these out using them enjoying them and downsizing while i do it and then over here i've got primers and my it cosmetics illuminating cc cream i love to wear this in the summertime um, but as far as primers i love to wear the monostat chafing relief powder gel as a drugstore primer on my skin it operates the same as the smashbox photo finish primer and i can do it at a fraction of the cost you can find these in the like feminine product aisle at your local targets and walmarts but i know it's kind of hard to find these when you go to uh, CVS and Walgreens. So if you don't find them at Target and Walmart, you can buy these online via Amazon. And again, they're like $5 a pop. So Monistat Chafing Relief Powder Gel. Love, love, love. Um, I've been working on this Maybelline Master Prime in the brightening shade for a few months. I kind of have my days where I love it, days where I don't. So working through it. And then I've got a deluxe primer or a deluxe sample of the Clinique um, super primer that's supposed to be universal. I really enjoy this. I might just have to pick up a full size of this later on um, once I get through more of this uh, hashtag I'm on a no buy. And then I have about a use left in this um, Too Faced Primed and Poreless deluxe size sample. So that's going to be gone within the next day or two. 
And then um, over here, I've got eye bases that I'm currently working with. Like this is the Maybelline Color Tattoo in Cream Beige. Um, this is the deep brown shade from the Leathers in uh, Chocolate Suede. And then I've got um, Seashore, Shady Shores, pardon me. This works really, really well if you want to tone down some of that oranginess in a Lorac Pro's Gold. Because I know it looks really, really orange tinted on my skin. Then um, when I get back to it, I've got my MAC Black Track Fluid Line. I love to line my upper lash line with this. This is the Bobbi Brown um, Gel Liner in the shade Black Mop Shimmer Ink. Really pretty if you like to wear deep purple. Or if you want a little bit less of an intense line because it's not black. It's more like purpley, grayish, brown, black. It's kind of a difficult color to describe. And then I've got two Maybelline gel liners. One of them is in Eggplant Aubergine and the other is in Sapphire because I wanted a really intense navy liner to wear in the summertime. And then I've got two Buxom Cream shadows I like to wear under the Lorac Pro shades. This one is in Poodle. I really like to pair this one under uh, gold and then light bronze to kind of take out some of that metallic sheen to them because this is really, really like a pale yellow, almost a white gold, and it takes down some of that oranginess factor. And then this shade right here, I like to wear under Garnet, and this is the shade um, Golden Retriever. I don't even know if they still sell these at Sephora anymore, but this is a really beautiful, kind of like a rusty brown shade. And then I also like to wear this under those new um, MAC Ladisco glitter shadows, in particular this one right here in uh, Dazzle Shadow. That's that beautiful new one I recently had a haul. I will link that below and I also like it over um, or under this shade in what is this? I like to watch. Yes, I like to watch. Let me take that back. This color is Slow Fast Slow. I was reading the description name. So this reddish one Slow Fast Slow and then I like to watch. And then as far as over here um, I've got like my everyday setting powders and stuff. I'm currently panning my NARS Translucent Crystal Setting Powder. I love to wear this over any of these foundations to give me a matte finish all day. And then I've got a sample of the Tarte Amazonian Clay Smooth Operator Powder. Going into this, I've got my Revlon Eyelash Curler and then my everyday eye products. Um, this is my L'Oreal Infallible Shadow in the shade Smoldering Plum. I wear this on my lower lash line because I really miss the shade Deep Purple after painting it out of the Lorac Pro. Then I have a um, Too Faced Shadow Insurance. I like to use this to prime my eyes. My Holy Grail Concealer, the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser for Dark Circles and Brightener. Another Holy Grail, this is the NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk. I like to put this on my inner corners and my highlight to really brighten up under my glasses. And then I've got um, a base I've really been loving lately. This is the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in the shade Moonlight. This is just a sample size. I've been wearing this every single day under light bronze because I can't get enough of that look lately. And then the two eyeliners I've been using every day. The first one on my upper lash line, this is the NYX um, Eyebrow Slash Eyeliner Pencil in the shade Dark Brown. I love this. I set it with Espresso from the Lorac Pro Palette. And then I've also been wearing this Silkissimo pencil from L'Oreal in the shade uh, Pure Purple. And I put the um, Infallible in, um, what is this? The L'Oreal Infallible in Smoldering Plum over on top of this liner. Before I did put um, Lorac Pro's Deep Purple over this. I love that. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as mascara combinations, I've been wearing the Lancome uh, Lash Primer XL as a lash primer just to really intensify my lashes. And then I've been going over it with the Guerlain um, Maxi Lash Volume Creating Curl Sculpting Mascara. I really have enjoyed this formula. I included it in my June Standouts Tips and Shoutouts video because I have been so impressed with this formula. And then, I have my NYX Wonder Pencil. It's just a nude pencil. I like to go in my waterline to brighten my eyes under my glasses. So it kind of gives you a hint of what I'm putting together. 
for my eye look. Then we start getting into the more variety section of the drawer and I really wanted to pull out a lot of things so that I don't get bored with my Lorac Pro. So first off I pulled out two Maybelline quads. This one is in copper chic because these tones kind of reminded me of using garnet and gold and so I go in every once in a while with a highlighting shade, this kind of rusty glittery brown over here if I want something you know more shimmery than sable because this is pretty close to sable. So I've really been enjoying that. I also pulled out this duo in, what is this one? Coral Oasis, because I thought, again, fun for summer. This kind of reminds me of that, um, yeah, this kind of reminds me of Urban Decay's Free Love. And so I thought, you know, this kind of reminded me of cream. I'd have a fun pop of green. Again, I can go in with this shimmery brown on the end and be good to go. Then I pulled out another couple of things. I've got the L'Oreal Infallible Shade in Amber Rush. I like to pair this with um, light bronze and gold on my lid and then pop sable in the crease. Really, really pretty every day, especially if you pair it with the Bite Beauty Lipstick and Rhubarb. I need to film some more Get Ready With Me because I have quite a few looks that I've really been reaching for that I'd like to share if you want to change up your um, pan that palettes. I also pulled out this L'Oreal Infallible Shade in the... Um, shade bottomless java just for a deep brown when i wanted something matte and i should have um kept out the um bronzed taupe but i really like this for something a little bit more red toned um if i want something a little bit more intense than sable from the Lorac pro it's a great crease color ps and by the way then i've got um, a wet and wild single of cream i pulled this out because i'm just about finished with cream from Lorac pro I'm gonna pan cream out of my Mega Pro and then I'm gonna bust into this one. Oh wait, brulee. Brulee is the color. So um, I wanted to have this on hand when I need it because those Lorac shadows pan really, really fast. Then I have this uh, Prestige Total Intensity Eyeshadow in the shade Bewitched. It's a duo chrome, starts off kind of gold, goes like greenish brown, really, really pretty. Gives you something fun to pop in with shades like Sable and Espresso from your Lorac Pro palette. Then I went another duochrome route and I pulled out the two Kat Von D singles I own. This one is in Love Letter. It's a beautiful purpley color. Kind of shifts brownish green on my eyes. And then I also pulled out, everybody has this duochrome shade in their brand. This is in On the Road Again. I know you've seen this, like ColourPop has their version with the Metamorphosis palette. Um, Matte Club is more blue than this. This is like a straight greenish brown, but very much in the duochrome trend. I like to pair this with um, Sable and Espresso from my Lorac Pro palette. You could even pair this with Deep Purple too. That'd be really pretty. So love that. And then um, I've also got this Alme Trio over here in the shade uh, Smoky Eye for Browns because I really like, uh, you know, this lilac -y purple shade in the middle. That's kind of what I've been reaching for, and I figure these two shades are just gonna be no-brainers, work with anything kind of colors. So I pulled that out, and then um, I wanted to go on and give these MAC Ladisco glittery shades a go, you know, so I can really make my opinion on them if I decide to keep them or take them back. I got these for my birthday. Um, this is in the shade uh, she sparkles. It's a pretty much everyday taupe. You can't go wrong with a shade like this. And then, of course, um, the I like to watch. It's that goldish green. Then this one is in Try Me On. It's a really beautiful teal. Since I have brown eyes, I really enjoy teals on an everyday basis. And then this was in uh, Slow, Fast, Slow. I really, really like this, especially layered over shades like Garnet. And then I wanted a backup brow shade, so I pulled out the NYX um, eyeshadow in, what is this? Under, underneath it all. Um, because I'm currently using Espresso in my brows, I've also used the shade, um, that taupey shade from the Mega Pro palette, so I pulled this out as a nice backup when I run out of both of those. And then as far as blush, I have four that I rotate on an everyday basis. The first two that I've been panning, I like to layer the 
Maybelline Dream Bouncy Blush in Hot Tamale on my cheeks. I just apply this directly to my cheeks. Then I go over it with the MAC MSF in Stereo Rose to give me a really beautiful orangey, corally cheek on an everyday basis. It works really well with any of those shades from Lorac Pro, even if you wear mauve. Um, but to change it up, I wanted to incorporate, I got this Urban Decay Blush for my birthday in the shade Bittersweet. It's that really intense purple um, along with that matte lipstick. So I kind of want to try that out with the shades Mauve, um, Light Bronze, and then maybe do Espresso in my crease um, just to see how I like that. So I'll be doing a Get Ready With Me so you can see how that kind of turns out. And then for the really pink days, because I have a lot of high-end berry lipsticks, I pulled out Benefit's Bella Bomba. It's a really bright, hot pink blush. I wanted something a little bit different than just doing corally orange every day. And then this is my everyday bronzer I use to contour. This is my Hula or Benefit bronzer called Hula. I love to run this in my uh, temples, along my cheekbones, under my chin, the sides of my nose, you name it. This is an awesome, awesome contour product. And then just so that I start using these because I've these have literally been sitting in my drawer for months. Um, these are the Sephora Prismachrome eyeshadows. I picked up four of them. I made myself like a little metallic quad going here. So I've got metallic peach or metallic beige, metallic purple, um, the bronze shade, and then the gold. And so I just like to pair these in with the matte shades from Lorac Pro. Not really sure how I kind of feel about these. They can have a little bit of fallout. They are a little too metallic -y intense for every day, but I want to at least give them a try. And then back here in the very back, it's going to be kind of hard to see. On the days that I wear Bella Bomba blush, I like to bust out with what's left of this Benefit um, High Beam on my cheekbones just to give me kind of a glow after I apply my foundation. So I'm still doing a powder highlight on top. This just gives me a little bit more of a lip from within glow after I apply any of my liquid foundations. And then I've got, this is really a product I love. This is the Sonia Kashuk Undetectable Cream Bronzer in Warm Tan. It really makes for a wonderful, subtle contour if you don't want to have anything crazy. Um, this does not last very long. I can pan it really fast, but it is beautiful on the skin. And then I had a backup of the Hot Tamale Blush, so I put it in the drawer so when I run out of that other one, I can start busting into this. And then I've got a deluxe size sample of the Lorac Spotlight. I figured if I wanted a more gold champagne highlight, I can bust this out and use it and enjoy it. And then, wow, that's really gross back there. Um, then on top of it, I have this um, hair donut I like to use to quick clean my brushes because of the um, abrasiveness of this mesh it does a really wonderful job of getting the powder out of your brushes so you don't have to deep clean every time you do your makeup and then you can feel free to change colors and then i have my one lip balm this is the orange blossom eos lip balm i like to wear when i want to rock my kat von d lipsticks because they are so drying that i need to have a lip balm so i keep this in the back and then i also have um, just this e.l.f. Kabuki brush to really kind of dust my um, NARS uh, translucent crystal powder if I need more coverage or if I'm trying to, um, you know, conceal tattoos or anything. I like to use this. And then over here, I've just got a random smattering of eyeliners. And this is a purple mascara I like to lay, layer on top of any black mascara when I really want to make my brown eyes pop. And then here I've just got like blues, teals, um, a couple of brown eyeliners. I've got a um, uh, sharpener and then the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer. And then um, a couple of the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks. I've got one in Amethyst, one in Coco, and the other one in like that beigey pink shade. So that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Maybe it'll give you some new ideas to come up with some makeup combinations. So let me know, you know, in the comments below kind of what your favorite combinations are and stay tuned because I will be doing a full makeup collection very, very soon. So talk to you later. Bye.